Hi there friends and welcome back. As mentioned in my previous video, today I'm sharing my tips on raising caterpillars to butterflies. First, let's discuss a butterfly habitat. Now, if you do purchase a kit, it's likely that one will be included. But in the case that you do decide to purchase the live caterpillars separately or just find some outdoors, I want to cover my thoughts on habitat options. The large habitat is a foldable pop-up tent uh, made mostly of mesh material with a zipper opening and then there is a plastic side for viewing. We were gifted two cups of caterpillars, so 12 total. And because they molted at different times, I decided maybe it would be wise to keep them separate. So we did end up using the small habitat as well. However, I will say that that was not necessary. The butterflies that do emerge earlier will not disturb the rest of the chrysalis. And so in using both, I found that they both work perfectly fine. The smaller habitat will easily hold a cup of six to eight um, caterpillars. I would recommend the larger habitat only if you do decide to keep your butterflies. So if you're not going to release them. So of course they have room to move around, um, but also so that you have room to place a potted uh, flower at the bottom of the habitat, which will be their source of food. So I was looking at habitat prices on Amazon and there is a significant difference. So again, if you do plan on releasing your butterflies, really there is no difference whether you go with the smaller or the larger habitat. Um, it, in my opinion, it only matters if you do plan on keeping your butterflies. So while we're discussing butterfly habitats, this is not necessary, but I did find useful to have a small plastic bin for cleaning the habitat once your butterflies have emerged, released, and it's empty. While emerging, a lot of meconium is released and it gets messy. So I filled this bin with warm soapy water and soaked both habitats for a few hours then left to air dry. It really was effortless and no scrubbing was needed. Paper towels, a towel, an old rag. You'll want to place something underneath your habitat to protect your surface from all the meconium that is released when emerging. Our kit did include caterpillar food, but not butterfly food. So for butterfly food, you can mix sugar. I only had brown sugar and that worked just fine. You'll need two tablespoons of sugar, one cup of purified water, and a few fresh flowers. Now these here are already even a little too wilted. Once the butterfly has emerged, it'll be about an hour uh, before its wings are completely dry and then it's ready to fly to begin to look for food. So unless you release each individual butterfly as it has emerged or about an hour after it has emerged, you will need to feed them. We wanted to wait until all of our butterflies emerged so that we can release them together, which meant that we did keep them in our habitat for about 24 to 48 hours. Now, if you do plan on keeping your butterflies longer, it's recommended that you switch out the batch of flowers and sugar water mixture daily. Even more, if you're deciding on keeping your butterflies through their entire lifespan, I'd suggest doing your research on which plant or flower your specific species of butterflies prefers to feed on and consider about providing that live potted plant or flower in your butterfly habitat. Since you are already observing this beautiful life cycle, uh, you might want to consider supplementing with some learning resources for a butterfly study. We kept it minimal, but these are the resources that we used and they were more than enough. Out of anything else, I would mostly recommend a notebook or journal for tracking uh, your daily observations or even just journaling the life cycle. A field guide is always a wonderful one-stop shop for information or resources. 
this Fandex family field guide contains more information than we need really, as it features over 50 species of butterflies, including our painted ladies. We already have this life cycle wheel on hand, which pairs perfectly. You can also find printable wheels like this on Teachers Pay Teachers. And of course, books. They're the best resource to have. And I always suggest checking your local library before having to go out to purchase anything. The Nature Anatomy book by Julia Rothman, we already have in our collection. And really it's the only book that we needed for our sources as it does have several pages on butterflies. And you can always find wonderful downloads as resources on sites like Teachers Pay Teachers, Etsy, or even check Pinterest for freebies. Here I want to quickly show you two tools which I found very helpful for cleaning our caterpillars. Uh, they're very wiggly, so using tongs or chopsticks very gently or a net to scoop them back into their cups. Okay, now that we've covered supplies, let's talk live caterpillars. If you do purchase live caterpillars, they will likely come packaged like this in a clear plastic cup with a secured lid. There will also be a filter like paper for the caterpillars to attach themselves to when they're ready to molt. The brown substance that you see at the bottom of the cup is frozen food. For the next few days, they will be eating and eating and growing very quickly. There will also be a lot of bowel movements that you'll need to clean out. My recommendation is daily because it really does accumulate very fast at the bottom of the cup covering their food. I believe this is the reason why two of our caterpillars died. I didn't clean it for two days and there was a mountain of feces and it covered all of their food. As they grow very fast, I might add, they also shed and release a silk that you will also need to clean out. For this, you can use a dry synthetic paintbrush, ours are from Dollar Tree, and you'll want to place a paper towel on your surface to dump out all of their bowel movements onto the paper towel and then easily dispose of it. As you can see, it's a struggle getting the wiggly caterpillars back into their cups. I don't have a clip of it to show you, but this is when those tools to scoop them comes in handy. Your caterpillars will continue to eat until finally you'll notice they start forming into a J position, attaching themselves to the filter up top. They'll start forming the chrysalis and when they do, you'll want to give them a day or two to harden to avoid hurting them in the transfer process. We had two caterpillars that molted without attaching themselves to the filter. This happens because they're feeding right up until they molt into the chrysalis. If they run out of time and can't make it to the top, they will molt anyway. Don't be alarmed, just lay them at the bottom of the habitat. Ours emerged perfectly. For the caterpillars which do attach themselves to the filter, uh, you want to pin them to the top of your habitat and I did this with two pins. Our first cup of painted lady butterflies have emerged and completed their metamorphosis. It's hard to see through the net but We'll try, there's one beautiful one right there. If my camera would focus. It's hard for my camera to focus, but we have a few of them in there. And we are feeding them. I made like a sugar water mixture and I saturated cotton balls in the sugar water mixture. And I also saturated some flowers that we picked up so it's been awesome to see them drinking from the flowers and from the cotton ball. So I again I do want to point out all the meconium that you see here which is all the, that red fluid. It does look like blood but it's not. Meconium is 
excess fluid that was not needed in the transformation. Um, and it does get really messy. So again, this is when I suggest you place a paper towel under your butterfly habitat or some sort of old rag to protect whatever surface your habitat is sitting on top of. Remember that the lifespan of a butterfly is only about two to three weeks. So if you intend on releasing them, please do so within two days or so, so that they may feed and migrate to lay eggs for a whole new life cycle. So I can completely understand on those who would want to keep their butterflies and continue to observe them and possibly even witness a whole new life cycle as your butterflies lay eggs again. But I do want to tell you that releasing them is a whole new beautiful experience in itself. It was new for us and our favorite moment of this whole study. Anyway, those are my thoughts and my personal tips on raising caterpillars to butterflies. I hope that my tips are helpful in some sort of way if you are thinking on purchasing a caterpillar kit. So thank you again for being here and until my next video.